Hi Aquarius, welcome to Higher Source Tarot for your January 2021 mid-month tarot reading. This is for all Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. If you're new to the channel, I post new readings every Friday and then typically again on Monday or Tuesday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, you could check back in a couple of days and watch a new reading. You could check a different part of your chart. You could even watch an older reading if the title speaks to you. These are timeless. It's sacred divination and they don't use a human timeline like we do. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to invite you to join us and become a subscriber. That'll help you to know if any announcements are made on the channel or when new content's posted. So let's begin and get the messages for Aquarius. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What does Aquarius need to know, please? All right. So we will do our tarot here, and then we'll do an Angel Answers Oracle card reading. And you can ask a yes, no question and a timeline on those. Current situation, you've got the Devil with the Four of Cups. Your destiny here, you've got the Seven of Cups. The distant past, you have the Star. The more recent past, you've got the Eight of Swords. Get the death card coming towards you. You are represented by the five of pentacles. The person or situation you're dealing with is temperance. You got the three of swords in your hopes and fears, but you got judgment in the outcome. Now, <clears throat> the, um, the two clarifiers here, both the earth energy, you've got the seven of pentacles and the two of pentacles. So certainly could be a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn you're dealing with here. You also have Sagittarius. Of course, you have Aquarius here too. Now, I like the energy that you're working towards, or, or I shouldn't say working, you're flowing towards. How about that? Um, but I do feel like it's about keeping some focus, keeping yourself light, you know, wear the world like a loose fitting garment, stay light, stay easy about things. Um, you know, you've got here, um, besides the major arcana, you've got water and air and earth here. So... The devil card represents a pattern of toxicity. It, it represents being stuck in something, being very restricted, much like the eight of swords here. So if it's like a job that you hate, you know, it's like one of those things where you'll call in sick rather than trying to just find a new job or a relationship that's really on your mind and it's almost an obsession it's really time to branch out and move towards something else. Your higher self wants to let you know to let whatever this is go, all right? It's very clear here in the reading. And um, I had somebody write a comment that I, I only do readings that people want to hear. I'm going to say that most people don't look at some of these cards and think, oh, great, you know? So anyway, um, just for a little credibility there, I, I, don't, I, I think that overall it's got a very positive message to it. But there's definitely an issue here. There's a conflict here. Now, the devil card, you know, if you look at it in its form with all the darkness, it really is a card about, the the message is about allowing that shadow aspect of life to, to be the greatest guide into the light. And really, when you know what you don't want, you have it very clear about what you do want. And so the, the real art of it is to focus on what you want rather than turning away, you know, he's got his eyes closed. He's in a, you know, very closed off position. That four of cups isn't looking for what he wants. He's still mad about what he doesn't want. So they're just trying to help you to move free of this, to move forward away from this. So in your destiny position, um, you've got this seven of pentacles and it's definitely about building up stability for yourself, building a career life that you're proud of, that is prosperous, that's prolific, abundant, building a family life that's prolific and abundant. It's at any area of your life really that you are, you desire to have growth and you've got it here. But it's also a card of wondering what's next. So some of you in your life path have sort of this hunger for more, always wanting one, you know, kind of, and that's, you know, that's part of deliberate creation, right? Esther and uh, Abraham Hicks always say you never get it done. That's what they're talking about is you kind of go on to the next desire. And there's no there's no criticism in that. But there is stability here. So 
your life path is to be stable and consistent. And in the distant past, here you are with the star card. So this may have been a time where you really got on a spiritual path, all right? It's about being connected to source energy here, this pool of consciousness here, meditating, quieting your mind, taking care of yourself. It's also a rebirth. This can be a renewal. It can be a revitalization. It can be reinventing yourself. And there's a lot of fulfillment in it. So it could be a career that was very fulfilling or a relationship that felt really fulfilling. And it feels like somewhere in the mix here in the last year, something changed and got very stagnant, got very restrictive. And so with the star card, even though it is your energy and it's a beautiful card, I mean, it's a card of self-mastery, which you have a few of those here. Um, it's also, though, a time of, you know, kind of just letting go emotionally and, and releasing yourself from anything and healing, healing old wounds, healing things that have gone very deep. They're, they're deep kind of wounds that are healed. Now, with this Eight of Swords, this brings in a restricted energy again, and it's a self-imposed prison. For some of you, there may have been something that you did that you feel embarrassed about. It may also be, I feel like this is tied to the Five of Pentacles here too, that you're moving away from something, but there's a you've got an internal conflict about it. Whatever you're trying to leave and wanting to move away from, whether you acknowledge it or not, because sometimes people can be in relationships that they know are not the right relationship, but they will not say it. Or it, we know it's not the right job, but again, we will not acknowledge it until the universe comes in with like a tower moment and says, uh-uh, it's you've got to move forward and forces the issue. So with this, again, there's a feeling here, like I said, of like embarrassment or shame associated with the water at our feet. You can move forward, but uh, again, a lot. some of you may have a lot of people around you talking, giving opinions, pressuring even. You know, I don't know what I'd do if you didn't work for me kinds of things. That sort of vibe. Oh, God, you can't quit. I don't know what I'd do without you. And really, it's not the right thing for you, though. So the death card comes in to bring a rebirth. And let's just show these together because I think they're important. You've got a new situation in both the death card and temperance. You've got a sunrise. It's a new day, a new dawn, and it's a new beginning for you. So... The death, the skeleton in the death card represents your higher self bringing a message that it's time to stand in the truth. The white and the horse is all about honesty, truth, and being true in your intentions, but to thine own self be true. So whatever it is in your life that you are, you've got some kind of conflict over, it's really time to let go of it. And interestingly enough, in the backdrop of the death card, there's a very tiny boat that is on its way to the sunrise that's over here. And so it really is about being led to the, the sunlight of the spirit. When you let go, you'll receive. It's the great paradox of letting go. More will be given. And the universe abhors a vacuum, so it won't just be left empty. It will not be left with a void of pain or unhappiness. This is transformation. It's transformative energy. And it always brings in more. It is a very valuable card to have in any reading. And sometimes we need a little nudge from our higher self. That's why we go to the tarot. It's our best friend that tells us the truth. So you're walking away from something here. And you're not losing everything, though. The card depicts leaving but moving towards something else. This card, too, always reminds me of a phrase from the Bible, Knock and the door will open. And so it's just telling you to be very clear about your intentions. Ask with a deliberate intention. Feel the feelings about having whatever it is that you desire, not the lack of it. And it will happen. It'll be yours because that's it's a universal law with this. Now, it's also too, though, you do have somebody, somebody here with you. So if it's a, you're already in a relationship and in, in the toxicity is about work or some other area, this is your person, okay? So you can, you know, you go along together with support. If it's not a job and it's about a relationship, again, you've got support here. And you've got love coming in. So temperance card here. I didn't, I guess I didn't mention 
Did I say, I guess I don't, I don't think I did say all the signs. You got Sagittarius, Scorpio, Capricorn. I know I mentioned Aquarius already. Um, so Sagittarius energy, and this is one of galvanizing people. It's bringing people together. It's healing energy. I mean, it really is a beautiful card. Archangel Michael, you've got Archangel Gabrielle and the Judgment card. You're being divinely guided here. So if it's a new relationship, if you're leaving something, there's somebody else here. This person's an uplifter. They're very easygoing. They're compassionate. They are not threatened by your success, whoever that's for. Um, and it may be somebody through work. I get sales for somebody. Maybe that's you or maybe that's them. Maybe even something in the medical field. Um, but it's somebody who is attractive physically too. There's definitely a physical attraction here, a chemistry. And it's beautiful. There's love here. There's a soulmate energy and there's an emotional healing, though, that takes place, especially for those of you that have left a toxic relationship. Opening yourself up can be really hard to do, but you're so worth it. And whoever this is, isn't a threat. They're not here to damage people. They have no, um, there's no payoff in that for them. They're really a wonder, this is a wonderful energy. So your hopes and fears, you got the three of swords. So Again, there's pain here, there's heartache, there's betrayal, but this is also a card of acceptance and understanding. So it's understanding that we get wisdom from those wounds and that there's there's an important part about just letting go and walking free from it, right? We don't need to bring that wounded energy with us, otherwise we'll just get more situations that make us feel like this. So it really is about letting go and trusting that the universe will bring in someone or a situation, if it's a job too, um, that heals you. So the other thing too, if it's a job, this may be more your concern about them, that you're going to lose some relationships from walking away from it. But judgment brings an ascension, okay? They rise from the limitations of the ego, the, the coffins that are there, and it's a decision. It's judgment day. But it's also, when we talk about Judgment Day, in that higher realm of spirituality that you are the cause and everything around you is the effect. So all of your vibration is being matched. And you are not a match to something here. And so it's time to renew and to ascend and to be in that frequency where you are aligned with things. Because there's not, there's not really another choice other than trying to lower your own vibration to stay down, but why would we do that? So with this, it's a wonderful celebration. It's self-mastery, it's self-acceptance, and it, like I said, it's celebration. I mean, it's the second to the last major arcana, so it's a wonderfully developed energy. You know, in terms of a relationship, it's such a breath of fresh air. And in work, too, it's like that turning point in a career where you really feel like, this was a huge leap and it's like that one thing where you really know I'm on the right path. You know, this is the right thing for me. So it's a new cycle. You've definitely got some new energies coming here in here. And overall, you know, I like this reading. I do because it's, it feels real to me. You know, it's like, it's like real life and, and going on a path of mastery and ascension and it's beautiful so let's see what the angels have to say here for aquarius and we're almost into your season too so what a time to, to land on judgment at the beginning here as we come in to your season sooner than later all right so you have here no need to worry okay so those of you that are feeling that eight of swords there's nothing to worry. You are on the right path and you can't catch a struggle when you're in alignment. You can't make a mistake when you're aligned with source energy. You're always on the right path. The situation will improve. I, you know, again, I like these cards for this reading. It makes sense that as you let go, you'll be released from anything that is that lower realm, lower vibrational stuff. And it's not your lower self that's running things. It's that higher self, that inner guru, your very best teacher who only knows the good. They say ask for help from others. So um, with this, I guess I would be uh, judicious in who you pick. Now, there is somebody really wonderful here um, who has no benefit to doing anything. Like they don't get off on gossip and things like that. So if you know who that is, that would be a good person to have around. Perfect timing, though. 
So you've got the right timing if you're looking at making a change. Now they do say choose a new direction. So when we get this, it can be just about that meditation piece that we had in the star, making sure that we're connected with that and really Sagittarius, the temperance card too, um, to be clear headed so that you're having those intuitive hits that lead to inspired action. Because sometimes when we've got a, a focus on the how, we slow the momentum down because the how is the universe's job. That's the heavy lifting. We leave that to the universe. You just need to know why you want it and what you want. And the universe figures out a path. And so be delighted and amazed by the work of the universe. Know what you want. Know it's yours. And that's all you really need to do and keep being happy in the meantime. So I love you, Aquarius, and I'll be back again soon.